Okay guys, today we are working on Graham's frame. Now Graham, if you're familiar, go back a video or two, he is a friend of Dean's and he brought me his 66 Ford pickup frame, which he was supposed to put together and then bring me the chuck so we do the body work and paint. But he didn't for some unknown reason. So anyway, he brought us a frame with a bunch of parts and pieces with no instructions and Lord knows how the fuck it goes together. And uh, so I thought, for all you guys out there that are working on a 66 Ford pickup, I would show you because there's nothing like being confused on what's happening. So I'm going to show you where I started with it. So we started with a bare frame. Graham had the frame all blasted and powder coated and that's how he brought it to me. So we start with a bare frame. First thing I did was obviously went through the steering box, we cleaned it up, I bolted the steering box on. Uh, why? Because it was the simplest thing I could figure out at the moment. <laughs> so the next thing we did was Graham has got four inch dropped um, I-beams here. So what I did was I took the I-beam and I actually, I don't know if you can see this or not, if we get around here, if we come up through here, the I-beam comes along, okay, and it slides up into this brace which is part of your frame. And then I ran the bolt through. I put the nut on the back side. Now I didn't tighten anything as I'm doing this. What I do is I always put the bolts through and I put the nut so the nut is sitting flush at the end of the bolt so I don't have to worry about it at least falling apart. Uh, don't just put it one or two threads on, try and put it flush. It still gives you plenty of movement, everything is loose. So I slid the I-beam up in where it belongs there, and that's where I got there. Then, I grabbed the strut rod, and of course we got some, he, he brought us some new bushings. And uh, we took the strut rod, we put the bushings on, and again, you can even see right here what I'm talking about. This is still loose. The nut, I just put it flush. There's plenty of movement here, as you can see. Then what I did was I slid this on, I took the strut rod and slid it on top of the axle, cleaned up the original bolt, and there we go. So our next step here, now remember we're starting from scratch, my next step here now is to deal with the coil spring. Now when you do, oh I guess I, I should left, I forgot, I left this out. Anyone that's not familiar, if, it, if you've got a chuck and parts and you're trying to wonder which way it goes, this strut rod, the shock mount faces inward, okay, so that's how you know which side is which, the shock mount faces inward. When you get your new, um, your new axles, they should say driver side or passenger sides. Ours are stamped with a D, but if you're uncertain, if you look, the driver side, they, they have an angle to them. The driver side is going straight, if you can follow my hands here, and it's kicking like that. So that would be your okay, driver so side axle. The next axle. step is the nut goes on here. So you've, you've, you've put your bolt up through, your nut is put on here now. Which So now what you've done is you've attached your, your strut rod to your axle, to your transaxle here, it's attached. Now your next part is, you've got this. This goes in the bottom of your coil, and if you look carefully, it's got a lip if you can see that. And the reason for that is it can only fit one way. If you try and put it this way, look it's all cockeyed, this way it's all cockeyed, but see, that lip fits over top of your strut. It fits really nice on there. Now your next step, and if you look carefully, the coil, all coils have an end to them, and you can see right up on top of the frame how that is like the coil, because that's where this, that's where up in here, that's where this end of the coil is going to go. So, your next step here is Actually, let's go this way. There we go. Now don't worry, you're not going to hurt your fingers, so don't be afraid to put your finger up in there. And you can feel that that's stopping right there. Now the whole purpose of this plate is that's what the coil sits on. Okay, so that's what that's resting on right there now. So there we are to that point right there. Now, our next step is, you grab your washer and your other nut. Again, I just put them on there loosely, there's our washer. It's a little bit of a trick, but it's all right. You can get in there. And I'm just going to get that. It is nut size, at least on this one, is one and an eighth. Unless yours is something different. And I'm just going to get it started loosely. There we go. I think we're pretty much good enough where we're at right now. Okay, so now you've got your coil in position. Make sure nothing's moved there. It hasn't. So our next step is to get this lifted up in place. And uh, that's pretty basic. We'll just grab a jack. So we'll be right back. We'll get the other tools that we need and we'll continue on. Okay, so I've put my jack underneath here. Now one thing I forgot to mention to you guys, um, this, is a, this is a bit of a hard thing. When you're jacking this up, you don't have to go very far. What I've done, you can probably see, you're probably gonna laugh at this, but I've got my hoist here. And what I did was I set the frame up on jack stands, I ran my hoist arms out so when I go to jack this up a bit, the frame can't just all of a sudden take off on me. 
Um, to be quite honest, I don't think you're going to have to need to worry about a lot of weight on the, on the frame anyway because the bottom line is, is that this doesn't go up very far. But anyway, so we got our coil in there. That's where we left off of the coil. We got our trusty jack underneath. I put a nice rag under there if you're watching Graham so I'm not scratching anything up. Don't worry. Anyway, it was your job to begin with. Here we go. So, our next step is I'm going to tighten up the strut here. That's going to be good enough for now. Okay, so next you grab your shock, and uh, we use Monroe shocks. Obviously, you get, it comes with the washers and that. You go your flat washer there, you go your rubber bushing there. Now the shock comes up to the hole that's up on top of the frame here. So grab your shock, come up, put it through there first. Next step, rubber bushing goes on, flat washer, put your nut on. Okay, there we go. Now the next step, like I told you earlier, on your strut rod, there's a little bracket in here. You can't really see it, I'm in the way here, but I'm going to get out of the way in a second. I'm going to lift the shock up in there, if you can see that, through that hole there. The shock is up and in there, and there we go. And then you just run your bolt. Oh, she's a tight old bitch. Oops. Run your bolt through there, if I can. Okay, well, it's Jackson away. Move this over a bit. There we go. Put a little bit of our trusty lube on there. There we go. Look at that, people. Isn't it amazing? So basically now, put our shock on, we're going to let loose, we're going to let the jack down slowly here. There we are, we're back on our stands. We're off the hoist, everything is fine. So we got this on, we gotta go back, tighten this up. There's a cotter pin that goes in there. We can tighten the shock up now, which will pull this up a bit more. Our coil spring is in location where it belongs. And there we are. So our next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into putting the spindles on here and we'll get into that. Now what uh, Graham has done here is he got 80, he got, took spindles off an 81 Ford F-150, which, which bolt right on, which allow you to have disc brakes. So. We'll tighten a few things up here that I just showed you and we'll get back to you with the spindle Okay guys, so we left off showing you the shock, putting it on. Um, I did a quick measurement, just real quick while we, while we cut the video off here. And I made a mistake, I wasn't sure because I just seen Dean and Graham brought these axles out to me. I wasn't sure what they are. It's actually a three inch dropped axle, it's not a four, so my apologies on that. Okay, now I told you they were using 81 spindles. I also mistake that. These are 73 to 79 Ford F-150 spindles. Now they bolt right on here, and what that allows you to do is that allows you to put disc brakes on your vehicle, so you don't have drum brakes anymore. So now you kind of missed out because it was a two-man operation here, and we couldn't film and do it all at the same time. You got a kingpin. Um, anyone doing this at home, you've got the kingpin sitting in front of you, so it's pretty basic. You can figure it out. Let's pretend this is your kingpin. Your kingpin has a notch in it on one side. Now your little bearing race goes to the bottom. What you're going to do is you're going to put your bearing race in there, you're going to tap your kingpin down in from the top down in there until you see that notch is going to line up that's in the kingpin. It's going to, if you look through this hole, which you can't with the camera obviously, you'll be able to see the notch as it lines up. And what it does then is when it's all lined up and before we jump ahead, you want to make sure when you put this bearing race in here that you've got no movement here. Now we were lucky on the passenger side, which I'll show you in a moment, we had absolutely no movement. On the driver's side there was a bit of movement. Probably typical, you got more weight on the driver's side, there's always a driver sitting on that side, right? He's always hitting the potholes. Anyway, so they do give you shims, and these things are very, very thin. They usually give you, I don't know, three or four of them. You put them in there one at a time until you've got absolutely no movement. You figure out just exactly how much shims you need in there. So now you've got your kingpin in, dropped in place, you've got your hole all lined up there, you get your pin. Now your pin, if you look at the axle, it's got an indentation. Now this pin goes from the forward side. On our other side, the indentation here is on the other side, so it went from the backward side. You put your pin in, then you put your nut 
and you, you put your nut on there and that basically stops the kingpin from either going forward or, or I mean going up or down it can't move and that's it your spindle is now on there and this allows you if anyone is out there doing it it's going to allow you to have disc brakes now anyone doing a stock frame yours would be the same thing you'd have a spindle but obviously you'd have a big backing plate because you're running drum brakes but it's still all the same at the end of the day you still have a kingpin you still have to put your uh, your final bolt through to hold everything in place everything's the same in that way okay so what we'll do is we'll get this all bolted up then we'll get back and we'll show you what we're using for rotors now anyone out of curiosity if they're wondering I don't know but if you got one of these trucks you're looking for a part number Monroe which you can cross over to anything the front shocks are 34900 that's in a Monroe number so you can always cross it over to whatever your parts stores have if that helps you out and uh, uh, it, your, your strut bushings, this is uh, strut bushings, these are energy suspension kit bushings that, uh, that, that Graham brought us and the number for that is 7107G, so 7107G and that was the strut bushings. Um, I'm just giving these numbers out because sometimes some of us go to the parts stores and we mention we got a 66 Ford pickup or whatever we might be working on old and the guy at the counter right away, if he can't find it on the computer, which chances are it's always new stuff, he ain't fucking willing to look in the book. He's like, no, it's not on the computer. I ain't looking. It's not here. It's obsolete. Well, a lot of these numbers cross over. So that's why I'm giving you the part numbers, just in case to help somebody out out there, because there is always good countermen. I have excellent countermen at all the parts stores I deal with, but there's always a dickhead at a parts store, too, that just doesn't want to look anything up because he's just lazy. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we're on the opposite side here now. So you saw us. I gave you a brief how-to on how to put all the suspension together in the front of these uh, 66 Ford pickups. If you're running a dropped axle, or even if you're running a stock axle, it's all going to be the same regardless. And then we put on 73 to 79 spindles, I should say this, this is a spindle off a of Ford F-150, which allows us, as you can see, we put on the rotor. So now you're going to allow it to have disc brakes on here. Uh, the rotor numbers, this will be for anybody, I guess, that has got a, a, a 60, uh, um, what did I say it was now again, I forgot, a 73 to uh, 79, your rotors are 5456. Five, and that's an ANCO number, 5456. So that's what they're using. You can always cross it over. So basically the rotor just goes on. I think all you guys are pretty familiar with that. You've got your bearing in the back. Grease it up really well. Put your bearing in the back of your rotor. Put your seal in your rotor. Lift your rotor on. Put your grease in. Your, oh, pardon me. Grease up your front, your front out bearing. Put it on there and uh, away you go. So pretty much that's, that's all we're going to do here on this frame today. So uh, you got a few how-tos this week. You got to see how this frame went together in the front end, and you also got to see how Dan's 37 Ford, which is outside here, got together. So uh, we were working on frames all week long. So we're gonna roll this out of here now. Um, we're waiting on the rear diff right now. I've got the diff down at my uh, friend Rod. He's rebuilding the diff for me. So once we get the diff back, maybe we'll do a how-to video on how to put the diff in. We're also doing a drop kit on the diff. Uh, where it reverses everything around so the diff will be sitting up a little higher so it will drop it down so we'll do a video on that a how to so hopefully these how to's are helping you guys out and uh, hey thanks a lot for subscribing and remember it's always a good time at all time and we'll see you next time